bits and pieces here and there. I don't even know what that was. It's a rubber boot. I gotta find that. There it is. All right. So, getting the brake caliber off. Now we got the bracket to come off. There we go. Hang on to it. I don't know if this nano is going to have the oomph to get this off, but we're going to give it a shot. I may have to take and uh, get something with more oomph as far as air tools. So let's give it a shot. There you go. Never doubt the power of the Nano. And if you're wondering, it's a uh, 35 millimeter. If I get back there and I squeeze it. There you go. You squeeze this with the uh, long nose. You squeeze that. And that allows it to pop off. So we can get that out of the way. And then we'll work on this real speed sensor next because that's really what I'm worried about. Hey, it broke free. That's the bonus. But it is rusty. Just a little bitty old fella. That's all it is. Now let's see if we can't get this thing to pull out. Oh, it's going to be a pain. It's locked in there. Sort of pulling and twisting. There we go. Look at all the rust on that. Got it off though. That's all it counts. I'm going to put that out of the way over here. Over by the brake caliper where it's probably not going to get so much abuse. So I got that out. Let me show you. You can see all that rust in there. But I got that wheel speed sensor out of there. Again, it won't be rusty because I'm not reusing this knuckle. But I do have to get this off of here, so I'm going to use those long nose pliers to do that. So this is more or less a cotter pin. So we'll see if we can't just pry it out. There we go. Reuse. I am doing the job though. Ooh, that's hot. That nut is toasty. Ouch! That built up a lot of heat. There we go. Yeah, we got these off of here. There we go. Now the knuckles loose. If I can get her out. There we go. This 
something didn't want to pop out as easy. Got it. Put these nuts together. Now yeah, let's see if we can't get this off of here without much fuss anyway. There we go. Got that off of there. This thing's rusted in there something fierce. There we go. Got it off. One unit and uh, yeah look how rusty it is it's not loose it's in good shape this wasn't the one I was worried about it's on the other side but look how rusty that is holy cow Look at that stuff right there. Holy mouth. Boy. I want to show you guys something. Well, since this is all rusty, I thought maybe we'd uh, hit her up with a little bit of a rust inhibitor. Couldn't hurt, right? Trying to keep things going here a little bit longer. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this knuckle on here. Might want to get this cap off of here too. Don't need that. hands why you gotta bring that down you gotta squeeze that into there sorry folks cooperation here. Holy cow. Nobody wanted to cooperate. You see why it takes two hands to do all this. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and beat this uh, up in there.
Maybe I'll put a bolt up here first. This should help me get the get that in there. See if we can get it cranked in there. I don't want to There we go. In like Flint. I don't know if you guys know who Flint is, but that's who we got. There we go. We got her in. Easy as cake, right? <laughs> so, new wheel bearing. Everything's good. Now we're just going to bolt everything back up. Mm, getting this uh, ball going on here. There we go. Nice and tight. Now we're just going to get this strut bolted up here a bit. Throw a few Ugga Uggas on it. Nice and tight. This castle nut tightened up. Get the hole lined up. There we go. Put that little pin in there. There we go, we're all set. I already greased these, so now the idea is to get this one in somehow. There we go. Let me get this one in somehow. Got them both in there. Now we can put the nuts back on. That's why I like these moogs, because you can slide these things back on without an issue. Well, at least you can reuse the moogs, right? There we go. Got it on there. All set. I already greased them, so we're good to go. But that grease fitting is so close to that drive axle, it's amazing. Okay, sway bar links on, tie rod ends on. This is tight. Strut up there is tight. Uh, ball joint is tight tie rod ends tight. What do we got to do next? Oh, how about putting our nice little uh, brake or wheel speed sensor back in. So, what do we do? We, like so. There we go. We got that in there. 
to put this little wheel speed sensor back in there. Slide in like butter. Holy cow. Just a itty bitty little bolt that goes in there. Forget what size it is. There we go. Tighten that up. Well, I went and looked. It's an eight. I forgot what I told you guys, didn't I? We're not going to go too hard on that. It's there. It's good to go. So a wheel speed sensor is in place. Guess all we got to do is put this wheel nut on here. Now it's time to put this axle nut on. Remember, you can't reuse them. You have to replace it. But thankfully, the SKF kit comes with a new axle nut. So i got to go look up the torque. I forgot what it is. Well, now's the time. Uh, torque spec is 258 on this nut. So I'm going to hit it down with the impact and then use the torque wrench on it to get it the rest away and see what we can do. Well, I got interrupted. Now let's go ahead and put this thing on here. Hopefully it works. Now we're going to have to torque it down the rest of the way. Nice and tight. I'm going to use a lot more hand tools on this one. Yeah. Not everybody's got air impacts and all this other stuff, so. Just sort of going with it. There we go. Nice and tight. Everything's back in place. And we're going to go ahead and torque on this uh, wheel nut now. First things first, let's get this uh, brake line back in here. Remember how rusty that thing was. It's going in like butter now. Just about done. Well, I'll put the screwdriver in here because I'm going to torque on this. Hopefully, I don't break the screwdriver off. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's get this thing torqued. 258, folks. Now, I'm going to go just a little further because this only goes to 250. One little bit more. There we go. Now we got it torqued, 258. Wrench only goes to 250. If I get a problem, I'll throw a couple more squeaks on it. But other than that, I think we got her set up. The screwdriver did it. <laughs> yep. Just put it into the into the rotor and then torque away.
we got the bolts torch, we got everything tightened, LCA's bolted up, sensors in, sensors in down here. As you can see right here, got that bolted in, got the new tie rod end in, sway bar links are all in there nice and tight. LCA has to be torqued down yet, but we got the brakes in, greased, lubed up, ready to go. And uh, you can see the LCA is all set to go with the new knuckle all made it up and everything torqued up. So this is the one job that I guess if you want to do it, it takes a little bit of effort. It is costly. Parts alone, I remember I placed the uh, knuckles. The springs, everything. Everything here is new except for the caliper. But otherwise, uh, suspension wise, all new. Now, looking at this, we got 33 and 3 quarters inches at the fender well on the driver's side. See, we got on the passenger side. And passenger side, we got 33 and a quarter, a little over a quarter. So let's go check another 2011 Ford Edge and see what it's running. Now, this is a 2011 Ford Edge with original equipment, and it's running 32 and a little over a half. 32 and a half and uh, that's what it's running for the driver's side this is the other 2011 Ford Edge and it is running 33 and a quarter as far as the uh, inches on this one so I'm going to say that the springs, the Moog springs, have definitely raised the front end up on this uh, 2011 Ford Edge Lou. Uh, so we'll see if it settles down over time. Thank you for watching my team's videos. Remember to like and subscribe. This is a Versigo production.